energy sources of quasars and active galaxies. So now we have seen that quasars have these very extreme characteristics and are at very large distances. Active galaxies have more intermediate characteristics and are at intermediate distances. But it turns out that what is happening in quasars, safer galaxies, elliptical galaxies, or radio galaxies, is all the same thing. These all have a supermassive black hole in the center of the galaxy. Now that's not surprising. Um, pretty much every galaxy we have studied, we have found a supermassive black hole in the center. Our own Milky Way has a supermassive black hole in the center. Um, and there's even some that have more than one supermassive black hole. So that's not unusual, and yet we don't see these characteristics in all galaxies. But what makes these different is the amount of material falling into the supermassive black hole. Most galaxies in the center don't have a lot of material falling into the black hole. So quasars, saferts, radio galaxies need a source of material. And one way you can get that material is colliding with another galaxy. Because now you've got all the stuff that just happened to come by as the two galaxies collide is going to fall into that supermassive black hole. And so now you've got this giant influx of material going into a black hole. And that's going to create these conditions that we see. As material falls into a black hole, it spirals towards the black hole in the accretion disk. Well, as it does that, it's producing friction because you have material right next to other material falling in. And so you're getting stuff rubbing against each other as it falls inward. And as it rubs against each other, that's generating friction. And that's producing heat and energy. So a lot of what we see, uh, the infrared, uh, material, the x-ray uh, radiation, all of that emission coming off of our uh, quasars and active galaxies is mostly within the accretion disk. That's the part that's generating uh, the bulk of what we observe. So if we've got a black hole and lots of stuff falling into it, what is that going to explain? Well, like we just said, energy output. The kinds of energies we are seeing uh, are insane amounts of energy. That means you've got to have an extreme location. And what's more extreme than a supermassive black hole? We said these things were small. Well, of course, black holes are small. We're observing the accretion disk, which is going to be outside of the event horizon. So it's going to be bigger than the black hole itself, but not huge. And like we said, these are at most the size of our solar system, which is going to be uh, the kind of sizes you would expect for an accretion disk around a supermassive black hole. All that emission, as we said, comes from this hot material, and it's hot from friction. As it's falling through this accretion disk. So we're getting all sorts of infrared and x-ray 
radiation coming off of ultraviolet, uh, the accretion disk, because of these extreme conditions. Jets. The jets are getting shot out of the black hole, perpendicular to the accretion disk. Here what's happening is you've got pressure building up as you get closer and closer to the event horizon. And not everything actually falls into the black hole. Some of that pressure uh, has to be released. And so you get this release of pressure in the form of these jets shooting out uh, just prior to the event horizon. So you've got material shooting out of the accretion disk uh, before it falls into the black hole due to pressure. near the event horizon. Active galaxies? Why are they not as active as a quasar? Well, they really are a quasar that has calmed down. So, in terms of activity, it starts with a quasar being very active, less stuff falling into it becomes an active galaxy where it's not as active and eventually it's going to become a normal galaxy like our Milky Way where it's very low activity. So we're really just seeing kind of the life cycle of a galaxy as we go from quasars to active galaxies to normal galaxies. And in the next tutorial we'll talk about those changes in a little bit more detail.